All right, guys, we got legs today. We're gonna do a quad focus leg day today. Um, we're in a bit of a, sorry, I'm in a bit of a kind, can't even talk right now, dude, what is going on? I'm in a bit of a rush today, or a time crunch rather. So we're just gonna do quad focus today um, and only four exercises, but three are actually just gonna be quad focus. So the first exercise obviously is gonna be calves. I've mentioned this in the past. I like starting with calves. I've got more energy uh, when I do them in the beginning of my workout, but it also helps facilitate a little bit more range or mobility, uh, especially when I'm performing quad biased movements, because I really wanna try to get my knee crossing or tracking over top of that toe. So that's why I kind of do calves in the beginning of my movement and I prioritize them in the beginning. Sorry, in the beginning of my workout, not movement. I'm all messed up. I'm doing donkey calf raises. I've explained this one, I think on a previous video. I like doing donkey calf raises. It's the exact same as standing, same position pretty much. Obviously, I'm just gonna be bent over. Um, but I like it, especially on days that I'm gonna be loading my spine a lot or at least on a hack squat. So I like to kind of switch things up. I don't like too much pressure always on my traps or these, you know, my neck area um, like you would get when you're doing a standing calf raise. So I just like to switch things up. This is great because it loads primarily my hips. So I don't have to actually load my spine and I can kind of relax my upper body a bit and focus primarily on uh, the calves. So last thing too, you can do the same movement. I've mentioned this before, but you can do it on a, on a leg press if you don't have this specific machine. So you can just set up the leg press as you normally would and then just throw the plates on and it's literally the exact same body position. You're just pushing in a different direction. So you could do it there. I just don't wanna do that. Um, and if I do recommend, if you do do it on the leg press, just you may as well just save it to when you're performing um, leg press movements. That way you're not going on leg press, leaving, going, doing something else, and then going back. Um, so you don't have to do it in the beginning of your workout necessarily. Although this is why I like to do it in the beginning of mine. So like I said, we're in a bit of a time crunch. So I'm gonna run through this last set with you. I've done three already, three working sets. We're doing four total. So on this last set, I know I've stressed this before, but I'll keep stressing it every time. I wanna make sure all that pressure is on the ball underneath my big toe. I wanna make sure that my foot, or at least half my foot is on that platform because that's gonna give me the greater amount of surface area to push off of. It's gonna allow me more leverage in the actual movement. And then lastly, as I press, I wanna think about instead of just pressing up, I'm actually thinking about driving that ankle joint forward and then pulling that ankle joint down and back to, uh, to elicit a, a deep stretch in the calf. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm initiating every rep, keeping those legs locked in position and then thinking about driving that ball underneath my big toe into that platform. But more importantly, driving that ankle joint forward, squeezing that calf as hard as I can and then pulling, actively pulling my ankle joint or my heel down and back into a deep stretch. Controlling every rep, controlling that eccentric, and again, driving that ankle joint forward and then pulling it back. Now, one thing I wanna make sure too, is I don't want my ankles to be coming out like this and drifting away from each other where I roll out onto my toes. So I wanna actually almost think about driving my ankles in towards each other as I push that ankle forward. Now we're not bouncing at the bottom here. We're pulling down, pausing even, and then driving through, keeping constant tension on those calves. All right, we're gonna move on. So now we've got leg extensions we're gonna start with to kick off our uh, quads. Then we're gonna move into some hack squats and then finish off some Lego, some Lego, dude, I can't talk today. Some single leg leg press. So I'll meet you at the leg extension.
<clears throat> All right. That was just one warm-up set. We're going to do three working sets here. On the last set, actually, I'm going to show you uh, mile reps. So we're actually going to do on the third working set, third and final, we'll do the last set mile reps. So I'll explain to you when we get to that set what that looks like and how to perform mile reps. Um, so first two sets are just going to be regular sets to failure. Um, I've moved this back rest up actually as far back as I can because I want to elicit a bit more length or stretch in my quads, especially that rectus femoris. Now, the reason I'm starting with the quad extensions in the beginning of my workout is for a couple reasons. One, it's going to allow me to prioritize the rectus femoris primarily, which is the that middle sort of quad muscle that runs down to the middle of your quads. Um, because of the hip flexion, I'm going to be able to shorten it um, or at least prioritize it or bias it a bit more on this particular movement where when you're doing other stuff like a press, leg press, hack squat, squat, you're not going to be targeting that muscle nearly as much. So I'm prioritizing it first because I have more energy in the, the workout. I can generate way more force because I have more energy. And then also, I hate using this term, but it's going to somewhat pre-fatigue or pre-exhaust my quads a little bit so I don't have to go as heavy on the hack squat. Now, the reason I don't want to go too heavy on the hack squat, not that I go that heavy anyways, I'm not that strong, but um, like I mentioned earlier about the calves is at least lately or the past few months, whenever I load my sort of traps, levator scapula, those type of muscles up through here, the next day or two, I just get bad neck pain and strain. So if I can avoid loading it too much, um, and I got to correct that on my own, it's my own issue, but if I can avoid loading it too much, then I'm happy my neck's not bothering me. So I don't have to go nearly as heavy on that machine um, by starting with this because my quads are going to be sort of pre-exhausted in that aspect. So three working sets here. Set number one. Now, I am using these wrist straps, like I mentioned before, because it's just going to help me keep my hips down the entire time and my hip, my grip, sorry, my hands don't have to become a limiting factor in the movement. So I don't actually have to hold nearly as hard. I can just use these straps and it helps keep my hips down or planted on the seat the entire time. That's going to allow me to generate as much force as possible in my actual quads. Now, as I tighten that, I realize I need to go heavier. So like I said, today we are in a bit of a time crunch, but that's why I'm a little scatterbrained. All right, first working set. Oh. Okay. Rest time on these for the sake of today's video, minute, minute and a half. Normally I'd probably take like a couple minutes, but just to keep the pace of this workout going. One thing I'm thinking about, and again, I've stressed this many times before, but when you're doing leg extensions, you want to make sure that your knees are pointed straight towards the wall or rather when you're extending up, you want to make sure that they're either pointed straight or pointed up towards the ceiling. So I'm actually keeping them sort of in. That's going to allow me to keep these knee joints aligned with my hip joint because you don't want to be flared out like this and then rolling in in the movement. I mean, that might work for some, but I do fear that you may run the risk of potential shear um, injury on the joint 
like some sort of sheer stress on the actual knee joint because it's a hinge joint and it only works in that one direction. You wanna just make sure that it's set up in a, and you're starting in a position that allows you to work in the direction that the machine is actually going in. So keeping these pointed forward, lining up knees with that axis of rotation, and then keeping those hips down on that seat the entire time, that's gonna allow you to generate a lot more force in your actual quads and in that target muscle, which is that rectus femoris. All right. Set number two, we did go a bit heavier. Rep range, uh, as many as we can get. Probably like 10, 12, maybe 15. So remember keeping knees forward the entire time not rolling out like that. Oh. Oh. We're going to stay at that weight. That was good. All right. So actually, before I start the set, this is going to be the last set, the third set. We're going to do myo reps. Now, you're going to pick a weight that's going to allow you to get your target rep range. Let's just say, for the sake of this video, 10 to 12 reps. I'm going to perform that 10 to 12 reps. I'm going to take 10 seconds rest. Now, at 10 to 12 reps, I mean, though, you're going to pick a weight that you're struggling to get to that 10 to 12 mark. You're going to rest 10 seconds, just enough for the burning to get out of your quads. And then you're going to go again for another three to five reps. 10 second rest, three to five reps, 10 second rest, and so on until you can't get or complete that three or even five rep range. Um, so it's just like a prolonged set, rest, pause kind of set. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to suck. So <laughs> that's the gist of that. So we're doing it on this last set, keeping the weight the same as my previous set because I only got around 12 reps. Now, again, locking myself in, keeping those hips down the entire time. Even though I want to go to full failure on these um, and perform those mile reps, I don't want to be using a lot of momentum and I'm not going to be swinging or moving my hips up to initiate that movement. It's going to be strict through and through. I want to standardize the reps the entire time. Keeping those knees straight. <clears throat> Controlling every rep, controlling that eccentric. Mm. And then exploding through. Mm. <laughs> So again, just enough to let the burning leave your quads. Three to five reps now. little simple hack is prop your hips up it'll help kind of drain and flush out the quads a bit to remove that burning and again there's no amount of sets after you're just going to keep going until you literally can't get three reps Oh, 
Oh god. Three more. One more. Oh. Try one more. Ah. Hmm. Oh my god, that's it. Holy shit. Again, mile reps are great because they allow, um, they just allow you to condense the time that you're performing or, um, sorry, they allow you to condense the time for your workload so you can get more work done in a shorter amount of time, similar to like a drop set. Some of the pause reps, things like that. Same concept. Or sorry, rest pause is what I meant. I don't even know what I meant. No, I'm kidding. All right, we're gonna move on. We got hack squats now. Either. So I'm gonna do one warm up set, like always. And again, it's just a gauge set. I'm clearly warmed up. But we're just going to gauge how we're feeling, make sure our setup is perfect, uh, that we can execute every rep perfect, nothing feels off or weird. And then, um, yeah, we're going to perform three working sets on this. The last set, again, depending on how I feel, I think I want to do like a drop set. Again, just to condense the time and get in almost like an extra set in this span of time, in a short amount of time. A tip. And when you're setting up this machine, if your machine allows you to adjust the angle of this platform or this bottom pad here, then I recommend adjusting it either on the lowest setting possible so that it's almost tilted forward a bit. Now, hopefully you have grippy, grippy shoes and it's not a metal platform where you could slide. But the point of that is, is that would almost facilitate like an ele heel elevation or like some sort of elevated heel because of that downward angle, it would artificially almost increase the length of your tibia. So that would allow you to get actually deeper in the bottom of this uh, machine and get you to get full knee flexion and have your heels or toes, sorry, or your feet, sorry, lower or as low as possible on that platform without your heels actually lifting off. So what I mean by that is in short is it would allow you to artificially increase the length of your tibia which would allow you to get deeper down because a lot of the time when people have poor ankle mobility or sometimes they have different, we have different length femurs, everybody's different. So people who are really tall typically have a harder time to squat down or even if you're not tall, but you may have very long femurs, it might make you harder or, or have it harder, sorry, for you to squat down deep enough and maintain an upright posture to one, minimize hip flexion, but to increase knee flexion. So in other words, you may not be able to target your quads as well if you have very long femurs. So this would just allow you to get deeper in the actual movement by lowering that platform. I know I just gave you a long-winded explanation, but hopefully that made sense in my frantic paced mind right now, trying to get through this, but also give you a quality video. So first set is gonna be a warm up. So like I mentioned, my quads are definitely warmed up. I'm not going to go crazy heavy on this. Normally I can do five, mm, probably five is fair. I was going to say six plates, but that's probably me being very overzealous. I'm probably going to start with three on this first set. And again, I don't care about the reps. I mean, my 
target that I'm aiming for is going to be 10 to 12. But if I fail at eight, I'm okay with that. And I'll just stay here. If I get to 12, we'll go up and wait. Um, what I want to think about though, my main focus for today, slowing that eccentric, slowing that negative, controlling that eccentric, that negative. The reason I stress that is because if you're someone who has a difficult time getting deep in these movements, go lighter. And I want you to just control that eccentric and almost relax into the bottom. The reason you have a difficult time, 100% could be mobility reasons. But a lot of the time too, it's just, you're not used to going in that range. So it feels very uncomfortable. And your body, our bodies, like to find the path of least resistance. So we're gonna recruit so many other muscles to try to get out of that uncomfortable state because we feel weak. So we wanna feel strong. So we're gonna do anything we can, like elevate our heels and you know engage other muscles like our calves to help initiate out of that hole. So instead, go light, sink as deep as possible, allow your body to almost relax in that deep position, get your footing down, so don't come out onto your toes, no rock back onto your heels, apply all that pressure through the middle of your foot, through that sort of midpoint right here on your foot, plant the entire foot on the pad and drive through evenly through the bottom of your feet. That's gonna give you constant tension and pressure through the entire range of the movement. You're not gonna be tipping out onto your toes or feeling unstable. So just a little tip, that's kind of what I'm focusing on when I'm doing these is slowing that eccentric down um, and just control, control, control. I don't wanna rush the movement. So we set number one. So we set number one. Okay. Slowing it down. Driving up. Hmm. Ah. to be honest I didn't count I think I got 10 maybe 12 I don't know definitely got more than eight we're gonna go heavier we're gonna throw a plate on All right, second set. Another thing I want you to think about, obviously controlling that eccentric dropping down, but more so think about your knees. One, have them tracking over top of your toes. Make sure of that, especially for goals to target the, the quads. But more importantly, what I find helps, especially controlling the movement and getting deep enough, is I actually think, of, I think about pushing my knees forward. So I'm pushing knees forward as I'm sinking down. And then as I initiate that first rep, or every rep rather, I'm thinking about pulling and extending my knees in the movement. That's gonna just allow me to engage the quads, which is what we wanna do because our whole goal is to target the quads. So I wanna engage them on every single rep. So pushing knees forward as I'm descending and then pulling knees back and extending as I'm rising up. All right. Keeping hips 
on this pad the entire time. I'm not letting my butt drift off. <clears throat> Eight to 10. Mm. 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 <sighs> Come on. Uh. Come on. Come on. Last one. Make it ten. Uh. And final set here. We're going to go to failure again. I'm keeping the weight the exact same. Again, just aiming for that eight to 10 rep. Then we're going to do immediately after, well, I'm going to drop the weights first. So that's going to give me a little bit of rest time, catch my breath, let my heart rate come down. But we're going to do a drop set. And again, probably drop the weight by half, maybe just keep two plates on, maybe even one, depending on how I'm feeling. But controlled drop set, again, slowing down that negative, slowing down that eccentric, controlling every rep, controlling that eccentric. And I'm stressing that because I don't want you just dive bombing and bouncing out of the bottom just to rush through it. The point's not to rush. The point is to stimulate the muscle that we're trying to target. So that is the game plan for this last set. Now my rest time, I've given myself about two minutes. Probably give myself another 30 seconds and I'm gonna go. All right, last set. Come on, control. Boom. Oh shit, come on. We're at five. Mm. Uh. Oh, come on. Mm. Two more. Let's make it ten. Oh shit, come on. Okay. One do drop. Let my heart rate come down. So I don't pass out. Oh. Now I don't care how many reps I get. I just care about the control and the execution of those reps. Remember, knees go forward, pulling knees back, squeezing those quads. 
Oh shit. Catches up quick. Last one. That's it. We're going to move on. We got leg press and then we're calling it. We're going to do single leg leg press though. So I'll see you there. We're just starting with a plate just to warm up again. Gauge set. Make sure my setup, make sure the machine's set up accordingly as well. We're targeting the quad. So I want to make sure my foot placement is low enough on the platform that allows me to get as much knee flexion as possible, getting my knee over top of my toe, but I, I don't want my heels or heel rather, because it's single leg to be elevating at the bottom. If yours start to elevate, just bump your foot up slightly until it doesn't elevate anymore. And again, keeping all that pressure through the mid of my foot. Feels good. Just doing five reps. I might even actually stay at this weight. Yeah, I'm gonna stay at the weight. It's actually good because my legs are so tired. So rep range. 12 to 15 reps on each leg, um, slow and controlled. And then we'll just pyramid up each set. We're gonna definitely do two sets, but most likely three. I don't think we're getting 15. <laughs> Oh, shit. <clears throat> okay. All right, so we didn't quite get 15 on those. That's completely fine. I mean, that happens. Sometimes in your head, you think you're gonna do a certain weight for a certain amount of reps, but your body's like, fuck no, you're not. <laughs> so we are staying at this weight for this next set. 
One thing I'm thinking about is driving my hips, keeping them in this seat the entire time. Again, I want to stabilize this, especially because I'm doing single leg. I don't want to be twisting my hips around at all in the movement. So I'm controlling every rep. I'm actively pulling and working my active range, pulling my knee back. But also, similar concept over to the hack squat. I'm thinking about as I'm descending down to this movement, my knee, I'm pulling it back and up, right, towards me, or pushing it rather. And then as I initiate that movement, I'm thinking about pulling my knee down towards the ground. Again, extending this leg, squeezing that quad, initiating every rep, especially in the bottom here, using my quads. Come on. Catch your breath, switch to the other leg, let your heart rate come down, you don't have to go right after. I'm moving this leg obviously on purpose out of the way. If I have it tucked in here, I'm not going to get nearly as much range and I run the risk of injuring this knee by having this platform like smoke my knee in the bottom. So it's just something to be cognizant about. Keep the opposing leg out of the way of the machine. Remember, knee goes up and back, pulling knee down towards the ground, squeezing that quad. All right, we got one more set. All right, guys. Third, I was gonna say fourth and final set. Feels like I've done a hundred. Third and final set. And again, just going right to failure. You might even include a bit of partials, maybe like three or five partials on those uh, last few set or reps, sorry. Same thing though. We're controlling every single rep, controlling that eccentric. This is not a rush or a race, sorry. Damn. Oh, shit. One more. I'm gonna rest for a quick sec. Now, hopefully those partials didn't look too sloppy. I'm, not, I'm really trying not to bounce out of the bottom. Maybe that last rep, I did bounce it up because it was just burning. But, I mean, I'll do better. I could always do better.
Oh. Last one, and then partials. Oh, shit. Okay. All right, guys, that is it for today's quad focus leg workout. Um, it was a bit of a short one, I guess you could call it, or at least more of an efficient quad focus leg workout. I mean, we started with our calves just to kind of get that mobility, prioritize them in the beginning. Then we started with, for our first quad movement, we started with leg extensions. Again, that was to sort of prioritize that rectus femoris a bit because you're not gonna really target it as much as any of these other movements as you would on leg extension. So we started there, had more energy to prioritize it. But also, again, I hate using that term, but pre-exhaust or fatigue our quads a bit. So we don't have to go too heavy on that hack squat. Again, it's just better for me personally in terms of actually loading my spine and my neck. So got into hack squat, focused on control, did that drop set. Sorry. We also did the Maya reps. I taught you that on the leg extension. And then we finished off with the single leg glute or quad focus uh, leg press. So I'm going to leave you with this. There's one thing that's important is focus on control. Always control that eccentric, control that negative. Don't dive bomb it. You don't have to have four second negatives, but they could be one second negatives. It doesn't matter, but control the movement. Don't let the weight control you and be intentional with the setup and execution of every single exercise. Understand what muscle you are trying to focus on and target and set up accordingly. But I mean, that's pretty much it. So as always, keep being diligent, keep working hard and be intentional. And uh, I'll see you on the next video.